In this video, we're going to be breaking down this fantastic canoe cart that was shared by Carlton in the community on our website. And this is actually a modification of an existing build that we've seen a ton of times in the community. I think it was originally shared by Nancy way back when, a few years ago. And uh, so many people have recreated it and customized it since then, including Axel, who made uh, the instructions and made a build video that I'll link down below for making um, this, this original kayak cart here. And Carlton customized the kit and made it just specific to fit their OC1 canoe, which is really awesome. And we can see it here. It's even got an awesome paint job, <laughs> which is really cool to see. And this whole thing is made out of three quarter inch empty conduit, which you can find off the shelf at places like Lowe's, Home Depot, and just different hardware and home improvement stores like that. And it's put together, these connectors here that are joining these pieces of conduit are connectors from Maker Pipe, which we manufacture in South Carolina, and we ship those to people all over the country. And uh, this made so you can, you know, build DIY projects like this. But this is really cool. And, uh, you know, I love this design. It, it obviously works really well. That's why so many people have, you know, recreated it and customized it so many times over. But, you know, here we can see, we'll kind of go through the build really quickly. And it, it's pretty pretty simple build. You know, you have one uh, kind of one axle here that runs from one side to the other. And this is a really simple technique uh, to do this and, uh, you know, pretty easy to do. Basically, you're just using your three quarter inch empty conduit as kind of the outer tube or the outer sleeve of the axle. And then on the inside, you can just use a five eighths inch uh, smooth rod or threaded rod. And then there's going to be a little bit of wobble between that and the inner uh, in the inner wall of the conduit. So you can use three quarter inch uh, PE, you know, polyethylene tubing that you can get at, I've had the best success at finding it at Lowe's in like a two foot section, uh, but you just use that as a shim for the, um, the axle, so to speak, and then the outer tube, which is the conduit. And then, you know, if you're using a smooth rod, then you'll cap it off, uh, you know, with those caps for that. But you can, I just like to use the, um, uh, you know, just threaded rod because it's ready, readily available. Uh, you can get a 36 inch length one, which works out great most of the time for these. And then you can just use some fender washers and then some nuts to hold the wheels in place. And then you just want to make sure that the wheels you get um, have bearings in them. And that'll what will be allow uh, what will allow the wheels to, to roll and move, um, you know, as you're pulling this behind you. And that's actually one of the things that Carlton customized because originally we saw the pneumatic wheels on the ones from um, Axel. But these are, I think these are the same wheels that I used on the bike trailer that I built a few week, or a few months back. Maybe even, I think it's been a while. But anyway, uh, which are like these Rubbermaid never flat wheels. I don't think they have air in them. They're just uh, kind of large wheels. I think these are 20 inches, if I'm not mistaken, and then they uh, have the rubber the rubber tires, and uh, there's no air in them, so those work really great, and um, that's really how you make an axle, but because that outer sleeve of the axle is made with three-quarter inch EMT, you can then just, just use connectors to build off of that, which is exactly what, you know, axle has done and what Carlton did here, where basically it's just the 90-degree connector, uh, which allows three pieces of conduit to uh, connect all in one connector. And the one piece is running continuously through the connector there. That's the, the axle. And of course that is you know continuously going through it. It's not broken up or cut up, obviously, because we got that threaded rod running all the way through acting as the axle. And then it's got two more pieces of conduit uh, coming out of it. And those terminate inside of the 90 degree connector and then go all the way up. And it's just mirrored on that other side as well. And then that goes up and and then they're using the 45-degree uh, connector as the complementary uh, connector to kind of uh, flatten this back out for this top bar to be able to hold the canoe or the kayak, depending on, you know, whatever it is you're trying to haul. So basically that 45-degree connector just joins two pieces of conduit together. We've got the piece that's coming up from the axle that terminates in there, and then that horizontal piece that runs continuously through it from one side to the other. And then, of course, it's just mirrored again on the other side with another you know, horizontal piece, and then the 45 degree connector is, um, 45 degree connector is, uh, you know, connecting those two pieces together. And then the last thing is there's five total T connectors, which again, join two pieces of conduit, very similar to the 45, except it's just a T and they're using one here as a kickstand. So you can see the T connectors grabbing on to this brace that's going from one side to the other. That is also connected with T connectors, just going from one side of the frame to the other, just acting as a brace, and then just T connectors um, to hold that brace in place. And then the uh, kickstand is coming off of that. And then there's a rubber pipe foot 
on the bottom down here, which works great, you know, if you're, um, you know, just has a rubber stop to keep it from sliding, uh, you know, on pavement and things like that. But that's pretty much the whole build uh, with the frame and um, all the connections, the wheels, the axle, that's everything in place there. And then, of course, they painted it, obviously, because conduit is silver and so are the connectors. Uh, but they do accept paint really well. We did a couple of videos on painting in the past. I'll link those down below if you want to check them out. But pretty much you can just, you know, kind of degrease the the conduit and maybe give a light sand and then just use the two in one paint and primer. I found that works really well and holds up uh, really well unless it's, you know, getting really dinged up or, you know, hit by a lot of rocks or something. But for the most part, it holds up really well. And um, so I'd recommend doing that if you want to paint it. But it has a really fantastic paint job that I think is made to match the canoe, as we can see here. And then there it is in place with the canoe on there. And a couple of things we can see here with this canoe in place is there is some pool noodles um, just on those horizontal bars, which will protect the canoe, kind of keep the conduit and connectors from, you know, rubbing against the canoe and scratching it up. And then they said they use some self-tapping screws to hold these straps in place, just drill directly into the conduit. Those straps go over and I would imagine hook on the other side. That's really awesome and a really great idea to make it really easy to, to hold that canoe in place. But really cool build. Love to see, again, you know, the, the different ideas and things in the community. Love to see someone share an original idea and then people customize that for their needs. That's what it's all about. That's why we do this. So really cool. Thanks so much for sharing this, Carlton. Love seeing it. I'll link this uh, build down below if you want to check it out or leave any comments, ask any questions. You can also do that in the YouTube comments here. If you like this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.